Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, we just praise you that we have this opportunity to come together and be in your house, Heavenly Father. No matter what obstacles, no matter what situations are going on, Father, today's your day and you're going to rise up, you're going to move forward and your Holy Spirit's going to just take charge of everything that's going on in our lives. So, Father, I thank you for the word that's upon my heart, Father, that you're going to just bring it forth for your glory, Father, for your honor. It's not about me, but it's all about you. So, Father, you... Just let your Holy Spirit move mightily today for the people that are in here, for the people that are watching, and for the people that watch in the future, Father, that they will be encouraged by this word, that they will have the tools that they need to fight that enemy and not give in, not give up, because you, the book already, <laughs> we're the winners. The book already says that we believe it. So, Father, we're praising you right now for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. How's everybody tonight? All right. It's good to be back. Amen to that. I know there's still a lot of the pastor used the word crud. Crud going around out there. And that's all we're going to... And the crud's from the devil. Amen? The crud is from the devil. So it's all about darkness. And that's where he's at. That's where he likes to play. But you know what? We don't mess with the darkness. We're all about light and life. Amen to that? Whatever we say, whatever we do, that's what we got to that's what Jesus, when Jesus, we say yes to Jesus, that light is in us. So maybe someday it's a little dimmer, you know. Maybe you need a little LED action or something like that, you know, or a little higher wattage, whatever the case may be. Let's brighten it up a little bit more, you know. And as we seek Him, as we uh, as go about our day, and just whether it's Christian music's going or fellowship with somebody, that keeps that fire burning. Amen to that. Yeah. I think I'm just going to read a little bit about this story first and then we'll kind of proceed with this. A lot of junk going on right now, but we know that God's got it. Amen to that? He's got this taken care of. There's no doubt about it. So, um, sickness and disease, back to the pit of hell where you belong. Amen. All right, I'll sneak my glasses out of here. So, we're going to go to John chapter 9, book of John. I'm going to start here, I believe, is where we'll get going here. And this is one of my... I do enjoy this passage very much because of it. Um, I had the opportunity to basically pray over somebody real similar to what we're going to be reading here. And it just it blew my mind because at that time, I, I, the faith was there. I mean, the faith is here now, but it was just one of those things... God said, you're going to pray for this person. And that's all it took. I mean, I didn't think about it twice. I didn't, no doubt in my mind. And that's as believers, that's what we got to have. No doubt in our mind and just be prepared in and out of season for whatever God's going to throw in front of us. You know, we all have those opportunities, different places, different avenues, whatever the case may be. But the main thing is to have that faith that when you pray, God's going to do something. We might not see it. We might not hear about it. We might see that person in heaven when that day comes. I don't know. We don't. It's not our responsibility at that time. It's when we're led to do something or pray for somebody, go for it, and God will take it from there. Amen. Anyway, so let's just start right in verse uh, number 1 in chapter 9. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the, I must work the works of him who sent me. This is Jesus speaking. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And as long as Jesus, as long as Jesus Christ, we claim Him, we are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. So right off the get go, this is what God showed me today because of just the the stuff that's going on out there. You know, there's sickness all over the place. It just is what it is. Tis the season. I mean, we can blame all kinds of stuff. But what I wanted to point out here 
we as Christians for sure, sure don't want to be pointing the finger at other people for, okay, you did this, or I did this, or I got this sickness from you, or you caused me to be sick, or whatever the case is, because that's a bunch of hogwash, A number one. God gives us wisdom, and we use that wisdom to do whatever it takes so that we don't become in those. But if it is, we're, we still live in a fallen world. There's still sicknesses, there's still diseases, there's still all that stuff. And the main thing is, keep honoring God with everything that we do. Amen. By pointing finger, we're not honoring God, that's for sure. That's right. We're cutting Him down, we're setting a bad example. You know, we need to come alongside other people or, you know, correct other people perhaps when they do that. It's like, hey, it's okay. It's okay, we're all going to get through this. We're going to be just fine. You know, and, and of course the, the thing about pointing the finger, I got one, two, three of them pointing back at me. So, let's not go there, amen to that? Amen. Three to one odds is not a good place to be. So, that's another thing. So I just wanted to point that out because, you know, the disciples were going, you know, these are the disciples. They've seen Jesus do a ton of things, but why? They had a question, why? Was it his parents? Did he do something? Well, as you read through this whole story, there's a little nitpick in there talking about Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees and stuff like that. And they, you know, he says, this man couldn't sin because he was blind all of his life. And yet again, the Pharisees could see, and they're clearly sinners, because, you know, they just twisted. You know, they were in the world. They were their own mindset and all this other stuff. They just couldn't understand when Jesus walked in front of them and what he did. You know, of course, he did it on the Sabbath, too. He healed this man who was blind on the Sabbath. Of course, that's a no-no when it comes to the leadership of the, of the, you know, the country at this time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I mean, they were very upset because that was the law. You cannot do that. Well, of course, he clarified it more than once. You know, in the word about Sundays, you know, there's a Sabbath at that time. They called it, it's like, hey... You know, if, if you, one of your animals falls in a hole, you're not going to let them sit there for a whole night. You're going to go get them. And basically, that's what Jesus was doing. He was saving his sheep, Amen. fixing his sheep, helping them, healing them, whatever the case was. Jesus didn't have anything against the Sabbath, but Jesus had work to do that his Father brought him down to earth so he could do that work. So that's what he was doing. He was going to be on this earth a short time, and he was going to press forward, and he was going to get her done. Amen to that. So that's what, something that we can constantly do too. So the main thing is, are we honoring God with everything that we're doing? Instead of looking for excuses or looking for ways or looking to push the blame to somebody else, let's seek the Lord. Amen. Let's, let's just you know, spend that time with Him and enjoy whether it's you know, music or whatever, or fellowship, just getting on your knees, reading the Word, whatever it is. And let's put that good in so it pushes the bad out. Amen to that. I, I think we can all agree even, you know, just, just thinking about this. Okay, I feel a little tickle in my throat. Oh, no. Shut up, devil. We don't, don't give them any room, no, no ground whatsoever, you know, because it's easy to do that. Yeah, most of us have been through this, some sort of a sickness here in this last week, week and a half. It's part of what happens this time of year. It's part of what happens what we're dealing right now. But the neat thing is everybody's still sitting in here. We're still worshiping the Lord. God is good because He got us through it. You know, pastor's in the midst of it right now. She was doing great. Um, she was resting real good when I left the house. So I'm believing that tomorrow she's going to be back up to speed, you know. So that's a good thing. So just we just got to keep lifting each other up. Because God, you know, farther down here He's talking about, you know, does God hear sinners' prayers? Does He do this? Does He do that? God will heal anybody He wants, any time He wants. Yes, he it don't matter where, when, or why. When He says yes, it's going to happen. We just have to believe that God is on the job and He's going to pursue whatever move. Yes, thank you. He's going to move in that situation regardless. You know, We might not see it, but yet again, it might happen instantly, just like this story that I read here. I didn't learn that my prayer was that edifying God so well that he jumped right on that situation instantly and he took away a headache he cleared up his vision and was like wow and so I was just overwhelmed with emotions because it's like I, I never seen this before you know but yet again because I felt led instantly I mean there was like yeah you're gonna, as soon as get talking to this person who was telling me all this stuff which half the stuff I didn't know but he was talking about his vision was messed up and as soon as it says to me, 
the Holy Spirit says, you're going to pray for them. End of the discussion. You're not going to weasel out or if somebody else comes there, look for excuses, you know. We do it, right? You know, I wasn't looking for excuses and thinking, uh, just, no, this is going to happen. This was in a public place, but it was going to happen, and it did. And God took it. He honored it and just whoosh, saturated them. And to this day, that person has never talked to so many Christians in his life. He says, you know, if that would have never happened, I'd have never had the opportunity to talk to so many people about God and church and share it with my kids and, you know, just... Whether you believe this story or not, he said, this is what happened. Take it from there. That's his testimony. You know, so we all have a testimony inside of us to share without a doubt. It's good stuff. Um, I have a really good friend, and I think God showed me something. God showed me something to share with my son, and I did that. And, and the funny part about it is it was about tithing. And I, we, we know all about tithing here. But yet again... I shared something with him and I said, you know, I said, I said, your business is booming, you're doing great, you got lots of stuff, but I said, you know, there's little things that I've been seeing in your life regarding, say, vehicles, um, other, other situations around the house with maintenance things and stuff like that. I said, you know, I, and I asked him point blank, I said, do you tithe? He said, you know, I said, I don't need an answer. I said, I'm just asking you a question. And he says, you know what? He said, that's funny that you asked that. He says, because him and his wife have just been talking about it. He said, we've been talking about that. He said, I says, you know, you are blessed. But I said, I think God can work more. You give more, you give more. I said, because just situations, you know. And I said, so, you know, it was cool. But getting back to this other friend, been wanting a healing, been wanting a healing, been wanting a healing and crying out to the Lord all the time and all this other stuff and the Holy Spirit put on my heart because this person had lost a very dear friend in this person's life. Very dear, very close. And I honestly think, I have not approached this yet, but God gave me this word about a, a week ago roughly. I haven't approached this person yet, but I believe this person is still mad at God and that's why there's a delay in the healing in this person's body. I, I really do believe. So when you hear the Holy Spirit give you those little inklings, don't be afraid to pursue them. And I will be doing that real soon here because this person wanted to come to the healing room last time and wasn't able to make it. And I said, I'll be at the next one. I'll be at the next one. So God is working on them. Amen. So don't be afraid. You know, if, if God puts something on there, you don't pull them off to the side. We know, we know the routine. You're not just going to be in a big crowd and just start blatting out things. You're going to pull them aside and and be face to face with them and just share your heart with them because it's all about love. Amen. Jesus wants to, you know, He surrendered all for us. Every last ounce of His blood, every last, ounce, last breath for us. And that's what we need to do for other people. Amen. Amen. Another little side story here today because I was thinking about this also do we really trust in God we can't see him but do we trust in him I'm going to say yes without a doubt but yet again there's still that unbelief okay help me with my unbelief Lord because I don't see it or you know maybe we don't see the healing or maybe I didn't get the healing or you know pastor's not healed up yet and stuff like that God's got it yeah. give it to him let him have it but I had some the fellows that put up my pole barn were there today. They were installing another garage door opener, Pastor, and I decided let's just put another one in it and then it'll be done with. So I got a hold of them a while ago. And two wonderful young men come there, you know. And, um, I left the garage wide open. You know, all my stuff is in there, you know. And if anybody else knows, us guys got a lot of tools, a lot of stuff, you know. But yet again, I trusted them with all my heart. I had no qualms, no thoughts of them. You know, hey, I'll be back in an hour. I got to run downtown. Yeah, no problem. We'll probably be done, but if not, close to it. Perfect. You know, and I mean, no doubt. And that's because we can see them, I think. Maybe, you know, I know their background. I've seen what they've done. I trust them. That's the kind of trust we need with a God in the spiritual realm so that we 
can keep that spirit to spirit locked in so that we have total trust in God in whatever situation in our life we're dealing with. It don't matter. God's got it. Whether we'll see the, the finale or the fireworks or whatever it is when it's all said and done or situation is over with or the healing's there, we don't know. But yet again, the way I, I've told other people that we're in a win-win situation. If God heals us, amen. God takes us home, amen. But until that time, we got work to do, amen? amen. You know, let's share it. Let's encourage each other and just like edify each other in everything that we do because God should be getting all the honor, you know? So let's just not let's shine that light wherever we go, amen? It's some really good stuff. Let's continue reading here because there's some other finger pointing going on here as we uh, work our way through this story. So we're in uh, verse 6. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground. This is Jesus. what Jesus did. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen he was blind said, Is not this, is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How are your eyes open? He answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Shalom and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him, who formerly was blind, to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received this sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him because he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you saw was born blind? How then does he now see? Hmm. His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But, what, but by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. And there again, because of the tension and the pressure and stuff like that of this leadership, they, the parents didn't want to get involved, which is good, because Jesus already had this all taken care of. Amen to that. So there again, the Pharisees were looking for a place to point the finger, you know, why did this guy do this? He's not from God. Well, I don't know if I'd have that question or not, being that we have the book in front of us. I guess we have all the um, examples, you might say, that the Lord has done. So I guess it would be a concern, but there again, of course, they did. he did it on the Sabbath, so these Pharisees weren't, weren't liking any of that. So right away they had to start slamming them and start putting them in his place or try to, you know. But the, as we read on here, I like the, the ex-blind man got in the face of these so-called leaders here. All right. 22, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ who healed the blind man, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give glory, give God the glory. 
we know that the, this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Amen. Then they said to him again, What did he do? How did he open your eyes? I like 27. This is good. He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? I like that. Well, look what he did to me. You want to be part of this? Let's do it. Of course, the Pharisees, Sadducees, they didn't want nothing to do with that because they were the leadership, not Jesus. They didn't want nothing to do with this man called Jesus, of course, because he was the king of the Jews. And when there's another king coming in, of course, that, that was not good. They didn't want to hear about it, you know. But I like that. You just want to become his disciples? Let's do this, you know. So, yeah. So that's a good thing there. I like that how he was so bold because he was blind and now he sees. Kick me out of the synagogue. Do whatever you want. I can see. I know where I'm going now. I've never had this opportunity before. And of course we all, all hear stories about people that maybe had sight. I know uh, who's passed away now. Older gentleman who had sight for many, 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 many years. And then of course they had uh, some eye disease and started losing his sight but yet again they could do everything so somebody that never seen anything and then their eyes were open that's got to be just like wow you know to see everything that God has created and just give him the glory and I, I imagine he just walking down the street just praising the Lord big time you know dancing and whooping and hollering and gosh knows what was going on because he was so blessed to have his sight on the Sabbath it didn't matter in the synagogues without him, I'll be okay. And Jesus already told him, you, you, I'm the guy. You know, as you, as you read on, Jesus says, I am the one. I am the Christ. I am the one that saved you. I'm the one that gave you your sight. And now you know me. That's all that matters. We know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior because that will take care of all the other stuff. The other stuff is all worldly stuff. So we don't need to worry about that. God will take care of them. He'll kind of erase that garbage, or he's got a whiteout, you know, so all worldly stuff. Gone, 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 gone. Or the trash can on the, which they don't even make that anymore, probably on the computers, do they? I don't even know. You said the trash can, you could junk it. See ya. Jesus can take care of all that kind of stuff. So like I say, it's God's business for the healing. It's God's business for salvation. He prompts us to share a word with somebody. Uh, just like I shared here not that long ago, I was in Myers, and I know it's a favorite spot for my brother, you know. Big star, lots of people, a lot of victims, you might say, hey, in a good way. Amen? No, no bloodshed here. Blood of Jesus will pour it all over them. Amen? But there was somebody in there, and I know they, you know, they're always threatening about, yeah, I'd like to come to your church. I'd like to come to your church. And I know they watch online. I know that for a fact. And Well, I work Sundays. I says, hey, we got a Thursday night service. What time? 6.30, so I'm believing one of these days that timing's going to be just right and they'll be here, you know. So we, we just got to continue to share that and just allow people to make their own decisions as to what to do. You know, we have to make our own decisions and somebody else has got to make their own decisions. You know, we can't force them. We can't beat them over the head. We can't do whatever it takes. You know, the old Bible thumpers and stuff like that. You know, there's plenty of them out there yet, you know, and, and it works in some cases, but yet again, it's about love. Jesus is love for us that he died on that cross for each and every one of us. We need just to share that regardless. Amen. You know, we're out there in the general public, you know, there's this sickness and all that stuff going on from a distance. Say, hey, God loves you. That's all it takes. You know, they go, huh? Come a little closer. <laughs> I'll share more with you. Amen. Amen. So, like I say, this story is just so awesome. There's so many stories in, this, in the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth, talking about the glory for God. Many situations, that's what Jesus did. It's about His glory. He did what the Father told Him to do. He did what the Father, what He's seen the Father do. So that's what it's all about. So let's just close in prayer. Father, we just praise You right now. 
that the ways of the world are not part of us. That Jesus, you were the example for us so that we can love people. We can do things the way that you want us to do them. And we will shine your light wherever we go. So allow that love inside of us just to be multiplied and be more than we could ever imagine. So Father, we just love you and we praise you. We thank you that this word is truth. You're, the Bible is all about truth and love. And so Father, we thank you for Jesus, what he did on the cross for each and every one of us so that Lord, we can share that with other people. That we can reach out, that we can do whatever you want us to do. We want to do whatever your Father showed you to do and we can do because you're our example. Lord, we love you and we praise you and all God's people said, Amen.